Hey everybody, it's your boy Dave Warden here. Jumping in, just gonna dive in. Just, just, just get it started. Been really hesitant to make this video because this is my first sermon. Um, really nervous about it because what I realize is that you know if you tell people you're gonna start your own religion, they say, "Oh, that's cool, ha ha, funny, funny." But then if you tell your people you're gonna start a church, everybody gets really nervous. And, you know, at the end of the day, I want people to love me. And I want you to know that I love you. So I want people to approve of what I do. But really, that's never been my motivation. You know, a, a lot of the things I've done throughout my life is fly in the face of what's normal. Not necessarily intentional, just because it's what I felt. It's what my gut told me to do. Whatever the universal energy guided me to do. Um, I had an extremely heretical band, blasphemous um, Countercultural band called the Serotonins that I was in with some lovely human beings years ago. Learned a lot doing that. In that sort of iteration of my personality, I was Reverend Dave. I've been an ordained minister since 1997. And uh, I really did it to lampoon religion, you know, because religion has been used to do most of the evil in the history of the world. I, I could say that. It really has. It's a justification. And, and though every major religious text has beautiful stuff within it, like great sort of suggestions and guidelines on how to live and how to be cool and how to be dope and love one another, it gets usually translated to the reverse of its meaning and uses a form of subjugation and violence and oppression and abuse. And, and growing up, you know, I would go to church and, and like even as a little kid, I could see the hypocrisy because you'd go in and first of all, they make you stand there and be quiet. Everyone's all uptight and they're dressed all fancy and like, like they have to impress each other, you know, like they have to impress something or show reverence or impress some person or priest or leader or, but mostly just a fashion show for each other. And I thought that was really weird because they're telling that they grew up in this book and the book says, God loves you no matter what. Well, then why does it matter how I dress? I want to dress comfortably. I want to wear shorts. I grew up in... You know, Virginia, it was basically a swamp. It was humid. Having to wear polyester stuff and long cotton things when it's humid, it just seems stupid to me. And then you get older and you start to study history and you realize that, like, the, the, the concept of a religious crusade. Uh, people, why did you go and murder tens of thousands of people? Well, well, I did it in the name of God. They didn't believe the way I believe. They didn't, they didn't think the way I think. So that gives me justification to murder and rape and destroy. And I'm not going to pay any penalties for doing those things because my God is the right God and my God wants me to go and murder and destroy. What the fuck? It's bullshit. It's fucking stupid. It's moronic. So I, I became a minister to, to lampoon religion. And, you know, it, 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 man, have I had struggled to come to terms with this, with, with my new calling. You know, um, it's kind of like, and I, I, I can't really talk about this in a way that, that's an equivalent thing, but it's kind of like finding a new sexuality and having to come out about it and tell people, hey, I know you thought I like girls, I actually like boys. Or I actually, you know you thought I was a man, but I'm actually a woman. Or something like that. And, um, you know, for me, it's like, I know you thought I was a raving heretic, blasphemer, and I am. However, I want to be a televangelist. It's really, really fucking weird. This is not a plan I had. This is not something, it just lately, I have felt the calling. And I never understood what a calling was. I never understood what a desire was. But, you know, like a few years ago, things were going really bad for me. And, uh, you know, materially, everything was fine. I was surviving. My family was taken care of. My, my lovely now wife, Jenny Ann, was taken care of. My pets were taken care of. My family was taken care of and take, you know, they do an amazing job of taking care of themselves, very blessed in that way. But, you know, I was really miserable at work and I really had no purpose and meaning. And, and like, so what I started doing, I was like, you know what? I'm going to use my phone to change my mind. I'm going to change the way I think, change the way I feel. I can't do it in the conscious way. So I'm going to start doing like these sleep meditations, right? So I got into these sleep, I started listening to this sleep meditation from this dude named Doxy. Look him up. It's like Doxin, but Doxy. And I just started programming at night. I would just put it on my phone and let the phone do the work because I wasn't willing or able 
or skilled enough to do the work on myself. So I was like, I'm gonna make my phone do the work and while I'm sleeping, I'm gonna shoot messages at my brain and, and maybe maybe they'll absorb into the subconscious, you know? Maybe this, this sleep learning, this subconscious impression is a thing. So I started listing a doxy and first doing like this 30 day meditation deal, you know, and it's all about money and abundance. I just wanted more money, you know? I wanted more abundance. I was like, look, I, I hate work and the job that I'm doing, uh, but you know, I could use more money. Money is fun. I love money, I love to spend money. It's fun to have, it makes me feel secure. I get to buy cool stuff and do cool things. So I started doing these doxy things for a while and it took a minute and I was meditating on it and doing it. And then, you know, I started to notice, and I was just like miserable all the time, but I started to notice I was excited to go to bed. And so I, I, I'd be like, oh, we'd be walking the dogs last thing, letting the little chihuahuas poop before we go to bed. And, and suddenly I realized, ooh, I'm excited to go to bed. I'm excited to go to bed tonight. I'm, and I started to realize like, oh my God, I'm excited to have this voice in my phone tell me things are gonna be okay. Tell me I'm gonna attract money. Tell me I'm gonna attract security. Tell me I'm gonna uh, bring health into my life. Tell me the law of attraction is working for me and that the universal is, is, is working for me. And started doing that and then started making me, you know, getting into it a little bit and doing a little research and reading and reading. <sighs> Like, listening to shit on my phone, okay? I want to make it sound cooler than it is, but, like, just listening to stuff on my phone, programming myself, like, not only in, in, in sleep, but also when I was awake, listening to, like, New Thought Movement, listening to Brian Scott. Brian Scott is essentially, like, my Jesus, in a way. Um, I don't know if you guys listen to Brian Scott, but he's sort of like this guy who examines all these, reads all, he reads all these different books, and he also does meditations and stuff. And I just started playing that stuff. For myself, I started listening to like these new thought leaders, you know, especially like Neville Goddard, really I thought was very weird, but very interesting, very dry and almost like, it was almost like a chore to get into it. And it took a minute and, and, but I started to notice things changing in my life. And I didn't know if it was because I was just perceiving stuff differently or if things were actually changing. And you know, it doesn't matter. I was, if I was perceiving it differently or, or if they actually changed, I was starting to feel happier. And I was starting to make more money and I was starting to understand that maybe there's an end game or a goal or something worth perceiving. You know, I, I work in the cannabis industry in California and, and for many, many years, you guys know that like it was very good to me. Um, I started a show called The Weed Report. Once again, flying in the face. I used my real name and I went on to talk about weed and everyone's like, don't do that. You're going to get arrested. Oh my God, that shit's illegal. And I was like, fuck it, doing it. You know what I mean? I was so down and out at the time. I was so poor uh, spiritually and like tangibly, monetarily, that I was like, screw it, I'm gonna do this thing. And, and my original goal with the weed report was just to get a discount on weed. Cause I would go to dispensaries and I smoked a lot of fucking weed, always have. Um, but it was just to get a discount. I was like, maybe if I talk about these dispensaries on the internet, they'll give me a discount. And you know what? I went and I went it and I discovered it and people liked it and I started getting into it, you know, and I was a TV producer. So it went from like these little videos of me sitting on my couch to extravagant videos, highly edited, traveling all around the world, doing weed shit and, 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 and filming my vacations and doing segments and, and, and running around and have people from all around the world started sending me pictures and I was like oh it's the world of weed and and people started saying stuff and things started happening energy started coming in and that evolved and I ended up getting a job I was unemployed for like a year and a half and I ended up getting a job as a bud tender for like 11 bucks an hour and I was really really embarrassed that I had to go back to retail after being this cool Hollywood TV producer you know what I mean but you know what people were really nice to me and they really picked up and people would come in and buy weed from me and I would like talk about it and I was so excited and passionate and the store got really successful and then I was managing like two stores and then things just sort of built upon each other you know and the energy started flowing and I started going with it you know and I started doing what my natural talents were and I started sort of following that and that's you know my natural talents are speaking performing getting excited telling jokes but about a thing right about weed and that ended up working out we launched a brand it was very successful. We, you know, and then, and then everything was fun. Me and Jenny Ann were going on big vacations and uh, we were traveling the world and living abundantly. It was fucking glorious and eating in nice restaurants and, 
and just buying nice things and furniture and, and just really, really amplifying our existence, you know? And it was because this energy was coming in and I was following what the universe was sort of telling me to do, right? So that happened. Then, then legalization came. And I thought it was going to be the greatest thing ever. I was like, you guys, you don't understand. We're going to have fucking corner offices and we're going to have corporate cars and health insurance and we're going to have retirement plans. And then legalization came in. It was exactly the opposite of that. It was a whole bunch of hungry venture capitalists coming out just to rape and destroy cannabis culture. And everything that we had done to get to where we were, which was celebrate counterculture and indulge stoniness and indulge this alternative form of healing and this alternative way of, of just being all the time of just feeling good all the time indulging that as a possibility that we could feel good all the time and, and that in itself is way is, is heresy because you know a lot of these people will tell you that life is suffering and you're gonna suffer and then if you're lucky you'll die and go to heaven where and then shit's good but you're supposed to suffer now you know what i mean they want you to suffer now so they can subjugate you so that's an excuse for you to be miserable so that they can fuck, there's a reason, oh, I got my foot on your neck. It's supposed to be on your neck. It's, life is supposed to suck. But maybe if you work hard, you'll die and feel good then. What in the fucking fuck? That is insane. So basically they came in and, you know, really fucked shit up. And I was really miserable. I went from having an amazing, you know, I had a falling out with people who I thought were my business partners from the old side. And I left them because, you know, they were cutting me out of everything I'd created, everything cool, everything I had done, they were going to take from me. And I was like, you know what? You can have it. Fuck you. I'm out. So I was like, I've got these skills now and I've got these things. So I ventured out into the world, you know, and I started working for like venture capitalists and stuff like that, doing what's called turnarounds. So turnaround is when a company is about to crash and you go in and save it and turn it away from the wall or the cliff it's about to go off. Boy, was that a mistake. Um, people were really mean to me. They didn't understand the way I was trying to get down. They didn't understand that like weed dealing was the way to sell weed, you know, hustling, getting out in these streets, doing it, building a vibe, building a brand. They wanted to do it this way. And you write a spreadsheet and then you do that. And then you do this and then you do this. And they were wrong and they've all been wrong and they've all fucked it up. Now these giant corporations are going out of business, you know, all this shit. And I did that for four or five years and it was fucking miserable and at the end of that time turning companies around only you know what you turn around they go back and fuck themselves up again because the same people that you're trying to uh save were the same people that fucked it up in the first place and the second they get some money or success they go oh well oh thanks dave we'll take over again and of course they crash it again and the whole time to get them to turn around, you were going against them. You were arguing with them. You were trying to tell them what was good and what was right. And they get mad at you for that. They get fucking bitter. And they hate it when you're fucking right. They would rather be wrong and, and in control than be successful and out of control. Which to me, I'd say, I don't care about control. I, I just want the money. Like, just bring me the sack, yo. I just want that cash and I'll go hang out with my friends and I'll go do whatever. I don't, you know what I mean? But these people had to be right and they would rather lose millions of dollars just to be right and feel like they're big, grown up, powerful people than to actually be successful. So that drove me insane, right? Another thing that drove me insane was that, was that the weird report got really popular and uh, people hated it. Like it had more viewers and everyone, and everyone hated it. For me, I was like, look, here's an unemployed guy who started on his couch with, with a quarter of a gram and is now traveling the world as a badass weed dealer in helicopters and submarines. And you could do this too. This is what we did. And no one saw it that way. I made a joke on an episode about is a sellout, total sellout edition, one of the best episodes. And it was a joke. It was a, I was joking. Dave Warden is a total sellout. And that caught fire on the internet and people started talking shit. And I was so hurt. My feelings were hurt so bad that people whose approval I wanted so much didn't want me to be successful. That wasn't okay for them. You know, that hurt so bad, you guys. Fuck. I, I really wanted you to love me, and I still do, and I always will. And, and it hurt so bad that people wanted me to be an unemployed schlub on the couch. Why? How come we can't? 
Why, why, why do Americans, you know, hate success more than they hate failure? I don't know. It's crazy to me. So that drove me nuts too. So I'm making stuff for people who don't appreciate me. So my creative outlet is gone. I walked away from that. Fuck it. Uh, I walked away from the badass brand I created because they were trying to steal that from me. You know what? Fuck it. You can have it. I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to be around this negativity. And then what do I do? I plunge into a world that was even more negative. Corporate America. Bullshit. The, the vamping of our badass stoner culture. The, the drainage of the spiritual sea that had given me so much. So I was miserable after all that. You know what I mean? I pretty much lost everything. Um, I, I was kind of surviving, but you know, I, I got lucky and I kept getting jobs and just enough to sort of stay in the mix and stay alive, you know, and, and, and support myself with Jenny Ann. And uh, I started doing these meditations and shit started to change slowly just in my world, like in my social life and stuff like that, which was never really bad, but like I just started to appreciate more stuff. I just started to look at things. I started to notice things. And then, and then I started, you know, sort of gardening because like when gardening, I wanted something that would for sure happen. If you take the seed and you put it in the ground, you put water on it, the laws of nature, the laws of the universe will make it grow. And, and I wanted that. I wanted, I wanted something that would for sure happen. I wanted to drop a rock and have it fall because gravity is a thing. And that we, we indulge that. And that, so that started to change with these doxy. Then I started listening to Brian Scott. And then Brian Scott introduced me to this concept of Neville Goddard. And Neville Goddard has a lot of interesting thoughts, but it's about the law of attraction and how to manifest things into your life. And I wanted to manifest a better life. I wanted to manifest more money and more material wealth, but I also wanted to manifest, and I thought that would make me happy. And you know what? It did. Uh, but it's a, this concept is that religious texts right? Like he's a, a Christian guy is that the, what they're telling you in the Bible is actually telling you about the laws of attraction, but they kind of changed it around because they had to personify this. They had to make a God and they had to make a thing and they had to give people a way to think about it. And once I sort of caught that, it kind of clicked for me. I was like, oh man, because when you look at some of these translations and you look at these things, which came through like four or five different languages, and, and, and have been translated by people who had their own agenda. The thing is kind of there. There is some meaning to that. It does make sense that you could open yourself up to beauty and open yourself up to love and the universe, that energy will attract more of that. You can open yourself up to wealth. You can open yourself up to health and the universe will attract more from that. And this universal power, this Energy is defined by physics that permeates all things. The part of, you know, they gave a name and they called it God. God. Put no others before me. Put nothing before this universal energy. Make the universal energy your first thing, right? Make that the deal. And they put this name God on it, okay? So then other people took this God thing. They added a whole bunch of action figures, you know what I mean? Like little disciple and people running around, right? So that helps to give sort of like different aspects of it, help that personify us, make those people, make those concepts that we could understand, right? And then other people came along and they used those action figures to play out bullshit and subjugate us all and, and, and ruin lives throughout the millennia, you know? And so for me, I was very anti-religion because I, I was very, I've always been very anti-hypocrisy. But then I sort of realized, like, I've always liked the message. Love each other. Be good to each other. Live in this beautiful garden you've been left. I mean, that's fucking dope. Who doesn't want to be loved? Who doesn't want to live in a place of love and abundance where everything's taken care of and you can live in heaven on earth? Who? I mean, that's fucking dope. What I was rebelling against was this message, right? So now I was like, wait, okay, so let me take away the bad people. Let me take those douchebags out of it. You know what I mean? Fuck that. Uh, let me look at the message and let me just go back to the message and, and take out all this other stuff and all these filters I've put on it and meanings I put on it and go back to that and start following my intuition and opening up to the universe and being thankful for what I have and asking for more, wanting more, allowing more, uh, assuming 
that I had as much as I always needed, assuming that I could get more. And so these meditations, I started doing them during the day. And then I started listening to more of these new thought authors and listening to new concepts around uh, abundance and a law of attraction and, and metaphysics and, and opening my mind up to different possibilities and realizing that this, this way, this constructed belief system had been built for me by other people and that I was reacting to that. Right? I was reacting to that construction. I hate that construction. It's okay. Construction only exists if I allow it to exist. Blow it away. It's okay if I want to believe in a higher power, in a bigger power. There are particles penetrating us all right now. Everything right now. That is a thing. Right? What is that? It's the universe. There's my, I believe there's molecules. I believe that we're made up of we're constituents. That, that everyone's made up of the same thing. That there's something that unifies us all right there. Dope. Okay. Let's accept that. We all need water to live. Okay. We got that in common. Let's start there. We all need oxygen to survive. Okay. We all have that in common. Dope. Isn't oxygen great? Let's start there. Is it water dope? Water is dope as fuck. <laughs> I don't care what you say. I made the coffee with the water. I love the water. I love the float in the water. I love boats. I love being on boats. Really nice ones. They float in the water. All this dope shit. I like air. Man, do I like air a lot. The cleaner, the better. So let's just start with the things we like. And when I realized, like, things started getting really good for me, I started sort of, like, using these meditations to imagine what I wanted. And it started coming. And, and I get knocked off my horse. This is still a new thing for me. I get knocked off all the time off of my horse. Uh, you know, and I got to get back on that horse and keep riding. I, I get the negativity, old patterns of fucking of uh, sort of non-abundant thinking. Man, I get pissed off at people and I get pissed off at situations and I gotta go, no, you know what? Get, get back, it's okay, it's okay. This is practice, this is Kung Fu. I'm gonna practice it. You don't, you don't do medicine, you practice medicine. You don't do the law, you practice the law. You don't do fucking belief, you practice beliefs. It's a religious practice. And, you know, one thing I'd kind of secretly always wanted that I never really wanted to tell. And I would tell people about it jokingly, but, you know, that joke was to hide it. I want to be a televangelist. Oh, my God. <laughs> How cool is that? I, I used to hate it because, like, I felt like those guys, like Benny Hinn was my guy that I thought was so interesting. Uh, because, like, what I hated was the sheep, you know, the sheepy following because, because, because one time, like, you know, he does this thing where he'll touch people and heal them and they fall down and they spaz out. It's pretty fucking hilarious, actually, if you watch it. But the really funny part was that he would go, touch! So he'd be in stadiums in, like, Tulsa in some huge stadium and he'd go, touch! And everyone would fall down and touch! He'd say, on the rafters, touch! And he's touching them with God, right? And one time, this whole section fell down and there was one guy who was obviously waiting to actually feel something. And he looks around and everyone else has fallen back in their seat. And then he goes, oh shit, and falls back because he wanted to conform. He didn't feel it. He, he was afraid to stand alone. And I hated that. I was like, all these people, they're, just, they're all full of bullshit. And, then, and once again, there, I was about them and not about me. But how awesome would that be? If you could just touch people with the power of God. Touch! I mean, just fucking, wow, and they're healed and it's great. And hey, you know what? That might be a thing. I'm open to that. But what I loved was these guys would get up and they would sing and they would dance. And I love to sing and dance and I love to perform. And people, you know what, no matter what, people loved these guys and they professed to love the people, right? And, and their agendas might have been fucked up, you know what I mean? But but I, I heard about this 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 preacher who had two mega churches in, in northern Arkansas and he would fly in his helicopter between each church who doesn't want to leave a badass building literally covered in gold to get into your helicopter to fly to another badass building literally filled with gold where people are there to tell you they love you and it's great and you get to share something and you all love God or you love whatever it is but that is cool man <laughs> I want that I like helicopters. I like gold. I like people that tell me they love me. I want all that shit. And, and, and the reality is, you know, when I look at myself, I love people too. 
You know, I, I post some cheesy stuff on Facebook, but the reality is like, no matter where you are, I just experienced the grace that's been happening too. We'll talk about that later, but just, I get hit with an energy and I just want to cry. Things are so beautiful. You see how weird this is? So this transformation, it's fucking glorious. And I feel like I need to share it <clears throat> with the world. I think, feel God this universal energy that pulls us all. And if, if God is the term I need to use to make it easier for me to understand through the doctrines that have been given me, that's okay. But I got a point, but what I'm saying is I love you. I do. And no matter where you are or what you're doing or how hard shit is or how good shit is, know that there's a guy out there named Dave Warden that fucking loves you and wants you to succeed and wants you to be happy, and wants you to be healthy, and wants you to live a long and fruitful life. And I want other people to love you, and I want you to feel loved. And there's only one thing that I am sure of that I can guarantee you, is that I want the best for you. And, and I hope that you want the best for me. But you know what, it doesn't matter if you don't, I still have the power to love you. I still have the power to want the best for you. That's my power. That's my God-given power. In that way, in my world, I am God. And you look at these new thought movements and there's like, there's no separation between you and the universe. There's no separation between you and this concept to God. You are God, God is you. And in my world, I get to love you. And that's the choice I make and I have that power. Touch, holy crap. I just, you see that, it just, touch, hallelujah, power of the Lord. I may drop into a Southern accent sometimes because I think that's fucking awesome because Southern accents are dope. Um, you know, I, I, we, we had a sermon in the serotonins that we did, you know, it was, I forgot what we called it, but it was a little sermon and I would invoke the sort of the uh, vibe of a Southern preacher. And I may still do that. I don't know. This is my first sermon, you know, and I was afraid to do it. And I know it's been a little all over the place, but like, holy crap. I cried. I think God came into me. I got a lot of shit off my chest. I was able to explain what happened to me, where I've been, what I've been doing. But things are great for me, you guys. And even when things are shitty, they've always been amazing. I've always had plenty of food. I've always had shelter. I've always had people that I knew love me. I've had pets. I've had experiences, I've never starved. I've never had some of the bad things that happened throughout history. Things are good right now. I know we're constantly on the brink of disaster. I know it's very stressful. The world could end at any time. You know what? The world could always end at any time. And it's actually been ending since it began. But you can save yourself. And by doing that, you are making the world a better place by knowing your love, by knowing that Dave Warden loves you. Maybe you could love yourself and that's the hardest part. And by loving yourself, you're God again, your power. I love myself. I appreciate what I do. I am good at things. I am good enough. And I think there's, I hope there's plenty of people in my life that know I love them. You know? And I, like I said, I, I am, I'm sure they love me. And it, it, some days, it's hard to convince yourself of that, but if that's what's happening to me, if this calling and this feeling in my gut that I need to become a, a minister and talk about this stuff and basically just get up on stage and tell people that I love them, if that's, if that's where this is going, man, I'm, I think I'm just along for the ride, you know, and I think I just need to go with it. You know, I was, I was compelled to do the weed report and my life changed. I, I was, it was a calling I followed through on it. It was scary. It was risky. I tied my name to something. I tied my identity to something. I will always be Dave Warden of the Weed Report. And, and you know what? It's fucking great. And people tell me they remember that or that they like that or they had that show and that I was involved in their life in some way and they know who I am and, and I made them happier. I entertained them. That's fucking great. That's that, oh, that fills me with joy. That fills me with the spirit. 
And if it's a spirit of happiness or love, it's whatever you need to call it, you know, for, for these purposes, for this context, what I'm doing, I think calling it God would be easiest. I think people understand what that concept is. I think that's the way it flows easiest from my lips. So I was starting a church. Um, I bought a building in New York and it, it has a basement up in wine country and there's a basement that's unfinished. And I think I'm gonna turn that into my little church. I think I'm gonna put in little pews and I think I'm gonna put up like little, there's decorations and there's definitely gonna be a sound system. I mean, if you want proof of God, Listen to Run the Jewels 3. Oh my God. Shit's amazing. I was rocking it this morning and I was just overwhelmed by how good those guys are. Oh man, they're poets. Some MF Doom came on. I was overwhelmed, dude. I was drinking coffee in my garden. And I just was like, dude, there must be some sort of universal energy that wants the best for me. There must, there must be a God. There must be, dude. I was given this thing by it or her or him or whatever. I was given this moment with this amazing coffee and with this fucking amazing music. And last night I went out to dinner with amazing people. Literally, the guy who works there, his name is Darren. We literally told each other we love each other. I gave him some weed. He gave us a bottle of champagne to celebrate our, our, our you know, getting married. It was fucking glorious, dude. I don't know his last name. Not really sure where he lives. But I think that dude loves me and I know for a fact I fucking love him. That's amazing. Today I'm gonna go to the gym. It's gonna be awesome. I go to this amazing gym. Uh, just a lot of sexy dope LA people just being be, doing their shit. Doing what they wanna do. Living their life in a way they want to live. I want to go work out. I want to look good. I want to feel good. God. They are gods in their world. They are taking power. They are being God. They are God. God is them. The universal energy. They're, they're tying in with it. They're creating more. They're working out to draw in more health. They are creating an environment where more comes in. And I think that's what this journey is going to be about. Um... Sorry I broke down in front of you guys. It was amazing. Uh, and I think the hardest part for me is just having the courage to say this stuff out loud. You know, I say it to people close to me all the time, but, but, but really saying it like, my name is Reverend Dave Warden, and I believe in God. And I want you to believe whatever you want to believe. I want you to be whatever you want to be. I want you to be happy and healthy and live in abundance and joy. I want you to enjoy this moment right now because it's the only moment that exists. We don't exist in the future or the past. We exist right now. If you're watching this video, I want to thank you for being here with me now. And I just, you know, this is going to be a weird journey. I'm going to start a church. It's going to be the God report, essentially. Uh, hopefully there'll be lyrics and graphics and uh, stuff like that. I'm definitely going to have some hymns. Got to do custom stuff so I can play it on YouTube, make some money, refurb the church. And hopefully, you know, my goal is to travel the world and tell people that I love them and that they are loved and that, and that, and that there is hope and that they will survive and that they are going to be great. And, I, and you're going to say it a million times, but um, I love you. No matter where you are, no matter what you're doing. And I hope that you love me too. Well, thank you. We made it through. Thank you for spending the time with me today. Thank you for loving yourself. Please do something nice for yourself today. Please do something nice for someone else. Just smile. That's enough. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Reverend Dave Warden. And thank you for watching The God Report. Peace.